the more I see companies get involved with podcasting or subject matter experts that get involved with podcasting, when they can talk about the fails and the gold that came from it, especially anything practical or how to or things that I can implement, it becomes very valuable and practical. Welcome to Soundboard with Toph. Here you'll learn all things podcasting to help you connect with your audience. And here's your host, Toph Evans. Hello and welcome to the Soundboard with Toph podcast. I'm your host, Toph Evans. We are up to episode 16. I think that's pretty cool because I ain't stopping anytime soon. And with today's episode, it may get a little deep. I'm just going to preface that because it's around sharing. Sharing because it can often lead to vulnerability where I take off the mask or anyone that is able to share with an open heart because it's about keeping it real in my eyes. It's about keeping it real and just speaking from the heart and doing it so that I can, and I'm doing this so I can connect with my listeners because they may be going through something similar. So there's no point sugarcoating it and just keep it real, but keeping it lighthearted as well. Now, what's happened? What's new in my world in the business around podcasts? Well, I've hired a a sales coach because I had to ask for help. My ego got in the way and I did not want to ask for help for a long time. And I asked for help so that I could fine tune my sales processes and my lead generation. It's something that I'm okay at it, but I could definitely improve. So for me, I had to ask for help and it was a recommendation and I'm very happy with how the process has been and I'm very intrigued to see how it will go over time and how my performance and I'm very intrigued on how it will, how it will pan out. Now, speaking on sharing and vulnerability in that entire realm, I, it's definitely fascinating to me mainly because that's how my mind works and that's how my personality is with when companies are able to talk about what's been happening, but to keep it real from the point of, yeah, we effed up, we messed up. And I think that's really cool because that's accountability right there. It's having the ability to say, we screwed up and as opposed to blame, blame, blame. And I know what it's like to blame, blame, blame because feeling insecure to learn from their mistakes and to say, look, we, we're going to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Or we're going to put processes and systems in place or as what Christo says, like failure or fail essentially just means first attempt and learning something I've took on board. I make sure that I do so that I'm not coming from a blame mindset. I'm coming from a, Hey, what can I do so that this doesn't happen again? Now, I've got a really cool story about this. There is a book called Creativity.inc, and it's written by Ed Catmull. Now, if you don't know who Ed is, he is one of the founders from Pixar. Him and Steve Jobs and another guy created Pixar after Steve Jobs' first fallout with, with Apple. He came on board. They wanted to create the first ever computer animated movie that was Toy Story, which was obviously a hit. An absolute classic, in my opinion. Now, there's one part in the book where they talked about how they lost a lot of footage for it could have been Toy Story 2 or Monsters, Inc. 2. could be one of those two. Don't quote me on that. And one of the employees lost all the footage. Now, they had a deadline to have the movie created by. They're running on a tight ship. They only have an X amount of people. And in the world of animation, rendering can take a lot of time, like a lot of time. And the interesting thing, when they realized someone had lost all the footage, all the, all the renders, instead of blaming that person, they put their solution hat on and said, what do we need to do to get this thing done? And I find that so interesting because when more companies can embrace that, it shows how they are able to navigate through adversity. 
And that's why I will always have a spot in my heart for sport. Athletes who are able to be clutch in those fourth quarter moments or the second half in the 89th minute and they're able to execute when they're able to do utmost problem solving in really terrible situations and it involves healthy competition and it involves camaraderie and their brains are articulating and finding solutions in like really odd and weird ways it makes me like really enamored by how they are able to operate like absolute high performers so when i hear a company that has spoken about their biggest f-ups and they were able to talk about the gold they got from that they've won me like that's going to catch my attention and i'm sure it's going to catch a lot of people's attention because that's about the comeback story in my opinion i love i think we all love a good comeback especially when the character of the story is going down, 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 and they've somehow found a glimmer of hope and they've managed to turn their life around or they've managed to turn this situation around. I just love that when companies can do that too, when they can adopt that mindset. And that all comes from sharing. That comes from sharing the lessons learned. Because how many businesses, and I'm going to say every business, goes through some sort of fail any sort of challenge, any sort of struggle, depends on what sort of language that wants to be used. They all go through it. They all go through these things, these roadblocks, these situations that are going to create resistance. That's fine, but how do you navigate through that? So what is the mindset needed? What are the habits? What are the learnings? What are the things they're not going to do again? Because that becomes wisdom. And that's why I like to share because I feel like I've failed a lot and I want to share my lessons learned so that anyone listening can go, oh my gosh, I'm going through the same thing, that there's a way out of this. So if I were to sum this up, the more I see companies get involved with podcasting or subject matter experts that get involved with podcasting, when they can talk about the fails and the gold that came from it, especially anything practical or how to, or things that I can implement, it becomes very valuable and practical. Anyway, let's wrap that up there. Thank you for listening. Please share this if you found this valuable and I will see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening and remember your voice matters. Soundboard acknowledges the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today, paying respects to elders past, present and emerging.